In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a clean presentation. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We got a quick and easy tutorial here today. And uh, there's a lot of things you can think about when doing a presentation. So instead of doing maybe a PowerPoint presentation, you can always do a video if you want to, you know, turn some heads at your company or maybe it's just a uh, promo video for your website or your social media. So there's things to think about when doing these sort of corporate typed presentations. I know this one's kind of, you know, very simple looking, um, but you know, there's some great concepts that go in behind here. So one thing you want to think about when you're doing a presentation is obviously you want to get some uh, information across probably through text. Maybe you're showing some uh, infographics, some info about your company. Um, but you always want to maybe mix it in with some photos. You know, that's what I see that it's a lot of cool presentations. They usually have some sort of uh, awesome photo that will show off what their company is about or whatever they're explaining. Um, and that's exactly what we'll be doing in this video. So we'll be incorporating uh, photos with uh, informative text that complement those photos. Photos. So let's go and get started. Here we are in a new composition. I already have our two pictures in here. And we're going to start off by going up to the top here. Grab the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw out a box. So we're going to cover up this, uh, I guess, right side of our frame here. And you know, maybe we'll keep it right there. We can reposition this if we want. We can make it just a little bit bigger. And we say this is how big we want our uh, right uh, box here to be our, with our info. So we can come here, open up the rectangle one, go to the fill, and we can lower the opacity just by a little bit, maybe keep it around 70%. So we'll be able to see right through this box and see our photo in, here in the background. And let's make sure the stroke is turned on. And I have it set to uh, five stroke width and I have the color set to white. And that opacity is at 100%. So we kind of have some border here between our uh, photo and box. So we can rename this layer and we'll call it box one. And I wanna go up here and I wanna drag in like my logo. So you might wanna bring your company logo in your presentation, who knows. Uh, let's go and maybe scale this down for now. And let's go to the top. Let's grab the ellipse tool and let's uh, click here, hold down Alt and Shift on our keyboard and we'll kind of draw out a perfect circle like this. Uh, we might make that a little bit bigger in a second. But let's just kind of position this right here in the center. And let's do the color of the fill here at the top to white. And let's open up the ellipse one here. Let's go into the uh, ellipse path here. And let's increase the size just by a little bit. And that should be fine. Let's go into the fill. Let's lower the opacity maybe to 70%. So then we'll be able to see right through that. And then let's take our logo and put that right on top here. Make sure that's above our shape layer one. And we'll rename this one uh, called circle logo. Okay. And then let's make sure both these layers are selected. Let's go to the Align tab and just use the little center buttons here to center these up. And that should be fine. And then let's maybe just for me, I'll change my color of my logo you know, to black. I'll go to Generate Fill and I'll just set it to black. And then I want to grab our circle lo logo here. Go to uh, Layer, Layer Styles, and I'm going to grab the Inner Shadow Effect. And this is going to kind of like offset it by a little bit. I might you know, increase the opacity maybe to 80% maybe a little bit more, maybe 90%. Just so, you know, now we have that nice little inner shadow there. I don't need to adjust any of those properties, but if you want to adjust the inner shadow properties, you just open that up under layer layer styles and you, know, you have your opacity and different parameters that you should definitely take a look at. So let's go and talk about some text. So our first text is going to be the word services. So I'll, I'll just grab the text title tool, click here, and we'll type in services. And maybe I'll select all of my, uh, I'll select everything here. And maybe I'll set the font to bold or something. And of course, I'm using Gotham, and I have a few different uh, font variations here. So that's pretty pretty awesome. And we can come here, put this right directly in the center. And then we have that text in there. And then let's grab the text title tool once again, and let's just draw out a box, kind of like this. Just click and drag out a box. And if we hold down Alt and hit eight on our keyboard, you'll get like a dot. Now that's on Mac. I don't know how to do this on PC. So it's Alt eight on a Mac to get a perfect dot like that, or bullet point. So drop a comment down below if you guys know what's on PC. But I'm gonna come here and maybe type in animation, you know, hit space on my key, or hit enter on my keyboard to go to the next line, add my bullet, do like another service. And I totally typoed that. So now we can select everything and we can start to adjust the uh, properties of our font here. Maybe I'll set the uh, 
the weight to light. And of course we can adjust the line spacing properties over here. And you know, I'll leave that there for now. I think that's fine. We might want to make that just a little bit bolder than light. Maybe I'll set it to book and maybe we'll just make it a touch bigger. And that should be fine. So, so far we have our animation here and let's go ahead and use some animation presets because honestly, I don't know why we have to create any presets or any animation from scratch. So like before, I'm gonna use the drop in by character preset. So go to effects and presets, open up the animation presets folder, go to text, animate in, and we use the drop in by character, put that right on top of services. And if we hit UU on our keyboard, we'll see all the affected parameters here. And as you can see, we scrub through here, it'll kind of drop down like that. But what we need to do is grab this position right here and we just need to move this where we want it to come in from. So we'll, come, we'll have it come in from the side and we scrub through here, you see it'll come on just like that. And we can come here, maybe offset this by a little bit. So maybe we want this to come on at like, uh, you know, one second and 15 frames. And we'll drag these keyframes in just by a little bit. And we'll make both these keyframes easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And that's already animated. And then let's grab our uh, main body text here and we'll do fade up by lines preset. And then we'll hit UU on our keyboard. And there's all of our affected parameters, all that's fine. We'll just make the keyframes a little bit uh, quicker. So bring them in just by a touch and maybe offset them back off it back in time a little bit. So now services will come on and then our uh, body will come on word by or line by line. So that's pretty cool. And maybe make these uh, easy as keyframes as well. And so far we're looking pretty good. And then let's grab our logo elements, which is a circle in the logo. Let's go up to layer, pre-compose and we'll call this one uh, logo. And then let's grab the pan behind tool, which is at the top here. Grab the anchor point right here and try to put this exactly in the middle as we can or as closely in the middle as we can. And let's go to like, you know, almost one second, hit S on keyboard, add a keyframe for scale, bring that keyframe backward in time and set the scale to zero. And we'll make both these keyframes easy as keyframes as well. So we're creating some very nice smooth animation. Maybe we'll offset this by a little bit. And you know things are looking pretty nice. And then let's grab our box one here, and let's open the properties. Let's go in the contents, and let's go to the rectangle path one, and let's add a keyframe at exactly maybe 22 frames or whatever. Add a keyframe for size and position, and we'll move forward in time. We'll break the link on the size and change the x here, the x property to zero. And then let's grab the position and let's have this go right off frame. So now if we take a look here. This will kind of just expand on the screen just like that. And maybe we'll make the last two keyframes easy as by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And boom, now we kind of have a very nice clean animation there. Let's say we want to take this a little bit further, but what if we want to add like our, you know, a website information or some contact info down here? Let's just duplicate this box here. And um, let's set the, um, turn the stroke off by clicking the word stroke at the top here. We'll click this little none button and we'll change the fill color to white. And let's hit U on our keyboard, bring up the keyframes. Let's just delete the keyframes since we don't need them. And we can play with the size down here. So let's come here, you know, decrease the Y here. And kind of create a nice little rectangle like that. And then we can just come here and position this at our, like our lower third here. And then we can grab our text title tool and we can type in our next set of text. So visit, you know, sunduck.com or something whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it simple and maybe change the text to black and we can come here try to put that in place and then let's grab make sure our text here and our new box is selected. Let's hit P on our keyboard for position and let's have it animate on right here. Let's add a keyframe for our position. Move that off in time a little bit and then animate this off just like that. So now all this will come on and boom there's our uh, box and make the, all these keyframes easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard and so far we are looking really good. So let's say we want to animate the next slide on and of course we can animate this off in a nice fancy way but since this you know I'm kind of lazy I'm going to just do this the very easy way. Let's go up to layer new null object and let's select all of our graphics except for our pictures. Let's parent it to the null object which is a little pick whip right here. And if we hit P on our keyboard, we can add a keyframe for position. Maybe we'll have this animate off at five seconds. So add a keyframe for position, move forward in time to maybe like, I don't know, we'll do like 
5 seconds, 13 frames, and we'll just animate it off just like that. And we make the first keyframe easy as. So there we've animated our first slide. So let's say we move on to our second slide. So we have our picture here, and let's hit T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity, add a keyframe for that, go to, you know, maybe 5 seconds and 13 frames, set the opacity to 0%. So as this leaves the screen, our next slide will kind of, you know, pop on here. And there's tons of ways to do this stuff, but I'm just kind of keeping this simple. And then let's just grab the rectangle tool, set the fill to black, and we can come here and boom, we have that on there. Let's go into the rectangle, turn the stroke on, should be set to white, set the fill opacity down to maybe 80%. And then we can add our text and if we come here to the align tab. We can center this up by using this little horizontal center alignment. And we can simply just do a very simple animation. So we can want this to come in right over here. So add a keyframe for size and position. And then maybe we'll move these keyframes off in time a little bit. Then break the link, set the Y value to zero. And then we can position this all the way at the top here. And then for our text, you know, we can just add a quick uh, preset. I'm going to use the decoder fade in to drop it on the text. Hit UU on your keyboard to bring up all the parameters. We can remove this in just by a touch and make both these keyframes easy as keyframes. So now, for the most part, we're looking pretty good. We've just, you know, did two slides there. And let's do the Ken Burns effect and make this a little bit more interesting. So the Ken Burns effect is basically just when you zoom in and out of photos, just kind of create like a nice little subtle animation. And let's grab this picture here. Let's hit P and S on our keyboard for position and scale. Let's add a keyframe for both of, both of those values. Move to the end here, maybe to right here, for example. And let's just, you know, maybe scale out of this and we can just position outward. So we, so if we scrub through here, we just created a nice little subtle animation. And of course, bring these keyframes to the end of its uh, opacity. So right there. So boom, that will animate the entire time is up. And then the same thing for our uh, second picture here, hit S and P on your keyboard for position and scale. Hold down shift when you select multiple parameters. Forgot to mention that. And add a keyframe for both of those. And we can go to the end of our animation here, end of our timeline. And we can create a nice little subtle scale inward and just create some nice little position. So now we scrub through here. We have like a nice little zoom in or sorry, zoom out. And then we go to a zoom in. And then of course, make sure to enable motion blur for everything, turn it on at the top and then you should be good to go. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And like I said, it was pretty easy and it's very simple. Uh, but instead of having to do your basic PowerPoint presentations, you can always take a look at video and you can always take this further But this explored the basic concepts of setting up a presentation in After Effects So hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more After Effects tutorial And please be sure to check out my social media networks those links are in the description of the video And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a good day